Hi, I'm Dean Bushmiller. You can see here that I have the CISSP plus 17 other certifications. In the past, I've actually written the courseware and been the main subject matter expert for the original ISC squared courseware for version 8 and version 9. I also helped author the original SANS courseware for the CISSP. In the past, I've taken a lot of my security expertise and brought it together in courseware like this, but I've also done this in the field. I'm a penetration tester by trade, and I take that real-world experience and I bring it to you here in this course. I want you to enjoy what we do, and we're going to have a little bit of fun as we go along, and I may joke around, but I'm very serious about security. You're going to deal with 10 domains here. 10 different distinct pieces of security, 10 different views of security based on management ability of security and technology. Now the original 10 domains was written about 30 years ago and it was a cooperation between Hal Tipton and Jim Duffy. Jim Duffy was the managing partner of ISC Squared and Hal Tipton was the subject matter expert. I had the pleasure of working with Hal Tipton on version 8 and version 9 of the courseware and he gave me a lot of really good direction. You would think a man of 78 years old would kind of knuckle under, but I'll tell you something. First he was a fighter, fighter pilot, then he worked for the police, and then he actually ran the certification for CISSP. And he was a tough old man and he wouldn't give up for anything because he believed in security. And I want to carry that forward with you. I want to believe in security like Hal Tipton did, and I want you to believe in security like Hal Tipton did. And make sure that you di dig down into each one of these 10 domains and find your expertise and carry that forward. With the access control domain, that's actually my favorite domain, and it's where I have the most experience. We're going to dig down into subject and object mediation through things like reference monitors, telecommunications and network securities, that's the domain where a lot of us have a lot of experience and we've learned from Networking Plus and Security Plus uh, a lot of basic principles and now we're going to amp that up to more of a security and management standpoint. You're going to have to shift away if you've done Network Plus or Security Plus, you're going to have to shift away from some of the concepts and answers that you're normally knee-jerk grabbing toward for your exam into the CISSP way. For information security governance and risk management, that's the main domain that everything is derived from. Everything is about policy. What is the policy and how are we executing on that policy? That's always the focus of our efforts. In risk management, we're trying to figure out what the threats are, what the controls are, and how to manage them in a meaningful cost-benefit analysis for our organization. For software development security, we're not going to be programmers, we're not going to try and play them on TV, but software development and managing those projects through the SDLC, dealing with malware, and dealing with web malware is an important part of what you're doing. Cryptography, we're not going to learn how to build cryptographic equations, we're going to use them and apply them in our situation. For security architecture and design, that's the one that scares a lot of people because there's some archaic terms that we learn from old models and learn from the trusted computing base and we start talking about the Orange Book all the way back from 1985. And what you find out is those basic principles can be applied throughout our organization if we understand that it's about confidentiality for one organization, integrity for another, and maybe it's availability for yours. We're going to deal with operation security. And in operation security, our idea is to get this flow of people in and out of our organization or this flow of packets in and out of our organization and how to optimize that in a reasonable manner that protects the intellectual property of the organization. We're going to reach into business continuity planning and disaster recovery planning and this is really that last word the most important one which is the planning effort that we're dealing with here. How do we make our organization more resilient to small failures or large failures. Then we'll deal with legal, regulation, investigation, and compliance. How do we intersect with the law and how do we interact with it and how do we deal with intellectual property from all different sides of the world? And finally, we'll deal with physical security, sometimes called environmental security. How do we secure the infrastructure against those physical threats? So those are our 10 domains and I want to make a suggestion to you. 
I want you to get yourself a nice big thick deck of note cards to practice for outside of this recording. And carry them along with you and make sure that you're really solid in the terms for each one of the domains. Write the definition on one side, the unlined side, and then write out your definition on the line side. Take those definitions from the course here or from a decent information security and risk management uh, document that you can find on the internet. Look on our site for more clues as to places to go to get this terminology. I think you should have about 50 terms per domain, maybe 10 or 15 other process cards per domain. So that's going to give you a maximum of a deck of like 600, which is about this thick. You're going to take those top terms and you're going to work those and get somebody else to work those with you. Get a partner now to do the CISSP with you. It'll make it move along faster. I always tell people to uh, take their cards and set them up and give them to somebody else and say, OK, create a yes, no pile and do that. 10 or 15 seconds per card. Make sure that it's quick and, sp uh, quick and fast and efficient so that you can divide them into your desk no piles. For all the cards that are in your no pile, keep on working those cards. For all those cards that are in the yes pile, put them aside and wait until later. Make, through, make sure you get through all of your cards and you feel you've got them done and then bring back in that whole deck and do that two or three times before your exam. Each one of those terms is going to help you to reach out and say, oh, this is what Dean said, this is how he said it, and this is how it relates to the CISSP and giving them the CISSP answer. Now let's talk about some terms you must know. So at a minimum, you need to know what confidentiality is, privacy, integrity, assurance, and availability. If you don't have a firm grasp of each one of these terms and you can't apply those terms to every situation on the exam, I don't think that you're going to pass. So let's start with each one of these. Confidentiality, now I'll read it off to you here. Limit access to information or systems to a selected group set by the owner or the organization. This is the right people having access to information. Think of a whole bunch of different synonyms for confidentiality that work for you. And as you're working your way through the material, say, oh, well, that's kind of an example of confidentiality. I want to put that in there. Privacy is not confidentiality. Privacy is an individual's confidentiality. It's your personal records. It's your health care records. And that's very different than confidentiality. Integrity, having the confidence that the information or system is represented correctly. This would be accuracy, purity, or even current. When we want to achieve integrity, we talk about the right information. So we've got the right people and the right information. Uh, close to integrity, but not the same as something called assurance. And that's trust and fidelity. We believe that the system is correct, and we have a high degree of confidence in that system. Lastly and sometimes most importantly, is availability. Now in security, what we think is lock it down, make it so that it squeaks and they can't get in there. Well, no, we have to make it so that people can get access to the resource when they need it. If they're the right people and it's the right information, then we should do it at the right time. So remember, we want the information or system to be usable by all the people who need that resource. Sometimes we call this ready, up, or even running. 